Today we will be talking all about cancer genetics. Before we do, we need to understand the role of the cell cycle on the development of cancer cells. The cell cycle has three checkpoints to ensure each cell is healthy prior to division. The G1, S, and G2 phases are all a part of the interphase cycle, while M indicates mitosis. The first checkpoint is there to ensure cell size and DNA is correct. The second checkpoint is important in making sure replication is complete. If any cell has an issue, here is where the cell will stop its progress until repair is complete. If the damaged cell is unable to repair, it will undergo apoptosis, also known as the death of a cell. The last checkpoint is to make sure the formation of two daughter cells are complete. Here is an illustration depicting a healthy cell that has successfully gone through all the checkpoints to divide. Cancer cells are the uncontrolled cell division. There are three types of tumors that can occur. A benign tumor is non-cancerous and does not change location. This tumor grows in size. Malignant tumors invade surrounding areas. Metastatic tumors are unpredictable and spread to other sites. Both malignant and metastatic tumors are cancerous. Factors that increase the rate of cancer are genetic and environmental factors. While genetics plays a large role in cancer, cancer is not inherited. Genetics causes cancer when mutations occur in the somatic cell. An example of genetic factor is virus. Environmental causes develop over a period of time and can include exposure to UV rays and pollution. These agents alter gene expression. Here's an illustration of a cell that has surpassed all checkpoints and has created uncontrollable division. Tumor suppressor genes prevent uncontrolled growth. Both copies need to be mutated for tumors to occur. Normal genes do not create tumors. However, mutated alleles means that the gene is unable to stop growth. This is a recessive acting mutation, meaning it is homozygous. An example of tumor suppressors are P53. Proto-oncogenes promote cell division of cells that are healthy, therefore no tumors form. If mutated, tumors will form. Mutated proto-oncogenes are called oncogenes. They are dominant acting mutations, so only one allele needs to be mutated for a tumor to form. To the right, we have our example. This dragon has a high rate of developing throat cancer because they have a mutation on the tumor suppressor gene, signifying that affected alleles are likely to be passed down. The dragon have all mutated XX alleles, thus homozygous. For proto-oncogenes, only one mutated allele needs to be expressed for mutations to occur. Because this gene promotes a cell division of healthy genes, when it is mutated, the uncontrolled growth of bad cells occur. When both alleles on gene X are mutated, benign tumors occur. This dragon has to have both XX alleles mutated because it is a tumor suppressor. Next we have malignant tumors which spread to surrounding areas. The gene Y is responsible for this. Only one allele of Y needs to be mutated because it is a proto-oncogene. Having both X alleles mutated along with a Y allele creates malignant tumors in the dragon. Last we have metastatic. In addition to having both X alleles, one Y allele affected. These tumors need a single Z allele, making it proto-oncogene. Therefore, the expression of a single allele for gene Y and gene Z leads to the development of cancerous tumors in these dragons.